thought that if um, I was going to be here with all of you, that Tully would be getting married and expecting a family. But now I'm just here speaking as his best friend. This is the hardest thing I've ever had to go through. I have a two and a half year old beautiful daughter that Tully loved like his own. And it's, I don't know how I'm gonna do it, but I know that I have all of you here for me. We've always been so close. And if Tully wanted us to take anything from this, it's just to love each other and petty things don't mean anything. I have been close to Tully since I was a little boy, running around like an idiot, not knowing what to do. But my brother showed me how to be a man. He taught me everything that I've ever known. I used to look at Tully and I would be like, God, I wanna be like Tully. He is the smartest person I've ever met in my life. And I would come home from work or get in a fight with somebody who just made me so angry. Because unlike Tully, I have a very short temper and I say things that I don't mean. But Tully, Tully didn't. And people like to glorify people in death. But Tully, everybody knows who knew Tully, that Tully was truly an angel who we were blessed to be around. And because of Tully, I, I'll never leave anything on a bad note with anybody because I never left anything on a bad note with Tully. I told him that I loved him every day. And now that he's gone, I can, I can sleep okay just knowing that he knew that I loved him so much. And I didn't, I didn't get in a fight with Tully over something stupid. And then he left, and then I have that kind of hanging on me. And Tully would want us to just love each other and just have compassion. <sighs> so, I love you, Tully, so much. And everybody here, everybody here loves you too. And I just know that he, I know that he's in heaven and I know that I'll see him soon. And this is going to be the hardest rest of my life to live without him. But instead of going on through my days when I would talk to Tully every single day, Tully, what do I, what should I do? What, what do I do? Tell me what to do. I knew all along what Tully would do. And now that I don't have him, I just want to be more like Tully. I don't want to get angry with the people that I love. I don't want to leave things bad with anybody because Tully didn't. And I'm never going to be the same ever again. And I just want to love everybody. And I love all of you guys. I love all of you. I'm so glad that you came. I'm so glad all of you came. So thank you so much. And we're going to continue celebrating Tully today. Thank you guys. I'm Tully's uncle and also a priest, Father Gary. So you know, he called me Uncle Father Gary <laughs> over the years. I'm also his godfather. He's my godson. And it's difficult to mourn the loss of family. And as a Catholic priest, having officiated at several thousand deaths, some of them untimely, I always want to leave a message of hope. In our Judeo-Christian background here among our family, in the Book of Wisdom, there are some words I would like to leave you with today. In that book, in, a, in the Book of Wisdom, it states that the souls of the just are in the hands of God and no torment touches them. They seemed in the view of the foolish to be dead and their passing away was thought an affliction and their going forth from us utter destruction. But they are 
at peace. Chastise the little, they will be greatly blessed because God tried them and he found them worthy of himself. For the elect, they shall, dart, they shall judge nations and rule over peoples, and the Lord shall be their king forever. And those who trust in the Lord will understand truth, and the faithful will abide with him in love, because grace and mercy are with his holy ones, and his care is with his elect. Those are words from the Old Testament that we all share, and I find great comfort and solace in that. It's helped me through, knowing that Tully's struggle is over. I cannot understand what he went through. Most of us cannot. From a peaceful, loving soul, I find comfort that he is in God's hands. He is at peace. No torment touches him. He wants us to celebrate that tonight. He is at peace. I can envision him there with uh, his grandmother and grandfather and those who've gone before him, Tully, Rosalie, all family members. I'm not going to start because I can't stop because as many have gone before us. And we do know that one day we are all going to be reunited. We are among God's elect, and God's grace and God's mercy are with his holy ones. God's grace is with Tully, and I find great peace and comfort in that. And Tully is celebrating now, and he wanted us to celebrate. I am not wearing my uh, uh, Roman Catholic priest garb tonight, and I'm going to put on this because I'm doing this for you, Tully. I don't know where this shirt came from, but it came to me. happy note and also for the beautiful words that you have said in Tully's name which in my 31 years as a priest nobody has ever done that before and gotten through it so beautifully we have an angel let's celebrate his life today and we mourn but we also celebrate we're going to be reunited thank you all for coming uh, one more thing um, there's a table over there with a bunch of Tully's t-shirts. And you know how he loved his t-shirts. We don't want anybody to leave without taking a part of Tully with him. So go over there. I'd like to see that table empty when this is over. Over here, a poster. We'd love to see you sign it. That's, that's our memento. Over here, this is a microphone. <laughs> this is an open mic. Not like they have at the clubs where some guy who can't play gets up. But if any of you have anything you want to say, a memory, a statement, whatever you want. I know there are a number of you that are going to play some songs. We'll get that going right away. Mainstream Scare is going to play. That'll be a little later after we've warmed the neighbors up. <laughs> um, but this is an open mic. I want all of you who feel the need to express yourself to feel free to come to this microphone and say whatever you want to say. Food's coming soon. Refreshments. Thank you all for being here. Tully would be overwhelmed. But he's smiling. Thank you. She and my younger daughter, we lived one house away from them. We lived one house away from them for many years, and they, they played every day. Dear Tully, growing up with you on Babcock Avenue was the greatest gift. Those childhood years were a slice of paradise. We never talked about what made us feel hurt or sad, because being around each other and Kate, Colin, and Taylor took all the upset away. I remember running over to your porch first thing in the morning. There was so much playing that had to be done, and we were out there until it was too dark to see. So many years of mischief and fun. Your mom never had any lemons on her tree, 
because we stole them all trying to make lemonade. I remember you walking around with knots of the cat on your shoulders. I think of you and those slippers that look like bear paws. I ain't got no shoes, just my bare feet, you'd say, and we'd all, all roar laughing. So many long, hot afternoons playing baseball with an arrowhead water bottle. We made fun out of nothing. It was a beautiful, perfect time. When I think of you, so many great memories come up. You had such a quiet, elegant way of making people around you feel loved. I believe you were an angel walking around with us. I'm sure there's a Babcock Avenue up there, and I plan on meeting you at Beeman Park and playing Three Flags up again. Save a few sour warheads. I know I'll tell you what I wish I said earlier. Growing up with you was a gift, brother. I love you very much. Sure, or if you 
you start to doze And I'll tuck you in Plant my lips with your necklaces If you need anything Just say the word I mean anything Rest assured If you start to doze Then I'll tuck you in Where my lips where your necklace is closed